Hi, my name is Heather and I work at the Schweitzer Brentwood Branch Library. And I'm here today with Whitney from the Park Central Branch Library. And she's going to teach us how to do a wall hanging weaving. So we've got all of our tools and all of our uh, yarn and everything that we're gonna be showing you. But first I wanted to talk about a cool new library resource called Creative Bug. And Creative Bug, you can access it on our website. Um, you also, we're gonna leave a link to it in the description box of this video. But with your library card, you can use it to access lots of professional how-to videos for a variety of craft projects. There is, let's see, there's sewing, painting, I think there's even cake decorating, all kinds of really cool content on Creative Bug. So check it out. And with that said, I'm gonna turn it over to Whitney and she's gonna be teaching us how to do the wall hanging. Hi. Um, so I'm going to say a few things about weaving before we get started. Um, just first that I'm a hobbyist weaver. I'm not a professional. Um, I do it. I find it very relaxing and it also, um, it's, it has a really low entry point. Like you don't, it's not a lot of expense. Today we're making our looms out of cardboard. There's not, um, a lot of, uh, that you have to learn to even just get started. We're going to do something very, very simple today. And so that's one thing that I really like like about weaving because then you start simple and you can make it into something super exciting and huge or small or a tapestry or a rug. So um, I also uh, enjoy weaving because it does, I feel like it's something that historically has been done by mankind for millennia. Um, we had Circe a couple years ago as our one read and the main character Circe was a weaver and that was a very important part of the plot. So. Um, I we love weaving for a lot of reasons. I find it very relaxing, but I want to stress that this is going to be very simple and that you you can be really, uh, you don't have to get stressed out about it because there's, there's all mistakes are fixable. There's not going to, it's not something that you f need to do perfectly the first time around. So f f go and feel feeling pretty confident that you can handle this. So I want to go over some of the tools that are going to come with you, with you, with the kit that you're going to pick up at Schweitzer Brentwood and uh, they're pretty simple things, and let me just go through them for you right now. The kit's gonna come with a bunch of cardboard pieces that might look a little strange to you at first, or, you know, like trash, kind of, honestly. <laughs> but they are gonna be useful for our weaving. So first, the first piece is this slightly narrow piece of cardboard, and it's called, it's gonna be labeled on the back, it's a heddle, um, which I'll, we'll talk about what it does. And this is just gonna be a spacer, so it's not, it's not a, Nothing fancy for sure. You're also gonna have a dowel. That's what we're gonna hang the weaving on when we're finished. You're also gonna have a little cardboard needle. Um, this is something that I prefer to use. There are lots of different things you can use to take your yarn in and out of your weave, especially with uh, the kind of loom we're using today that is a, a full piece of cardboard. This makes it easier to, a little bit to slide between the, uh, the, the weft of the board. So, um, but you also get a little uh, large eyed needle as well. Um, one thing I do prefer this over these is because we're using some real chunky yarn and so it's definitely not gonna work on all of our bigger, uh, bigger pieces of yarn, but that's also there for you to use if you need that. You'll also get a little crochet hook. Um, it, yours might look a little bit different than, than this one, but um, this will be, we'll be using it at the end to weave in our ends of the, of the yarn. So it looks nice and neat. You're also going to get a large selection of yarns. They're gonna be pre-measured for you. Um, and they're gonna be, they're probably not gonna look exactly like this. We're gonna have them packaged up for you, but they'll be labeled and they'll have, um, be, be in order of that they're gonna be used in throughout the, the weaving. Some things that might be useful for you are also a, um, a, some sort of measuring device. So a ruler um, or, or tape measure even would work. Um, and then also some scissors. This is a, these are kind of some specialty scissors that are specifically for cu cutting uh, cardboard. You don't need anything fancy like that, but it might be useful. Um, you can use just a small pair of scissors as long as they're sharp enough to cut the yarn. Um, I also, for cutting cardboard, I have a um, X-Acto knife. This is kind of a heavy duty version, but just a simple X-Acto knife or a box cutter would work. And then a pencil useful for marking measurements. If, especially if you're not, you don't pick up the kit, you're not unable to get the kit. Um, these items will be helpful for making your loom to start out with. So that is, oh, you're also going to be getting a loom. Doesn't look very fancy because it's not. So you'll get this, it'll have notches on both ends. It's gonna measure 12 inches by nine inches. And so uh, this will be a little bit 
larger than what our final product will look like. So that'll give you an idea of how big the little wall hanging is going to be. So that's what's gonna be in the kit, along with a set of instructions and a list of supplies as well. If you are unable to pick up uh, the kit from Brentward, we're gonna supply a list of the items you need, but also I'm gonna show you real quick how to make the cardboard loom. Um, from any piece of cardboard you can find, it needs to be 12 by nine inches. This is a little bit larger than that, but the thing that's very important not very important, pretty important, is that you want the corrugation of the cardboard to run the, the length of the loom. And that's just gonna give it strength because the, the yarn will pull on it and there'll be tension on it. So you want the corrugation running up and down the length of the loom. We have a 12 inch ruler here and I'm basically, I've already done the nine inches across. Oh, that's not showing that. There, nine inches across. <laughs> and then we're gonna do the 12 inch length. And so I'm just gonna make a few markings. And then we're gonna connect those, maybe. There we go. This was just a little bit more than 12 inches. It doesn't need to be super strong cardboard or anything. This is just a simple, um, uh, simple cardboard. But if you can find one that's like a double corrugated cardboard, that would be, make a really strong loom. Um, one thing, oops, let's take that off. Uh, one thing that's nice about um, making a loom out of cardboard is. You can absolutely throw it away when you're done. If you decide weaving's not for you, it can go right in the recycling bin. So first, when I cut these, usually I cut the top layer and that enables me to bend it a little bit and then it's easier to cut through the second layer, layer, layer of the outside. Oop. So there you go. Not too fancy, but that's what does it. So I'm gonna get one. Well, actually I'll use this one. This one will work. So now we need to do, um, the bits of the loom that is gonna hold the, the yarn here. Because this is nine inches across, it makes it pretty simple to divide it evenly. You're gonna just mark it every half inch and give maybe about a little centimeter or to half inch depth. So for me, what I like to do is go ahead and do the markings. Just go along your ruler. I'm not gonna mark the whole thing. It's pretty straightforward. So you're gonna do it every half inch with your ruler. And then any old scissors, you're just gonna snip that. Make sure you get it a good centimeter or so in. But it doesn't have to be exact and it certainly doesn't have to be pretty. It just has to be enough to hold the yarn onto the, when we're gonna slip it in between the, there, so. That's basically it, and you're gonna do that all the way along. So if you weren't able to get that um, kit, you can make it yourself pretty simply. And that'll be in the instructions uh, that we'll link to as well. All right, so now we're going to lay the warp of the loom, and that is the, the uh, that's gonna create the body of the weaving that is that goes up and down on our, our loom here. So the first thing we're gonna do is you're gonna have your warp um, yarn or thread, and we're gonna tie a knot at the end. Just okay. a simple knot, maybe a double knot if you want to make sure it's kind of, it just basically has to be big enough not to slip through the cuts that we made on the. And should be like pretty close to the end. Yeah, pretty, yeah. just like leave a little tail, maybe an inch or so. So we're going to take our knot and we're going to go to this first cut up here in the, at the, at the top corner of the loom. We're going to just slip it in and pull it so the knot is, hangs up on there. Mm -hmm. So in there. And then we're gonna go down the loom and go to the bottom, right below it, and go in. We're gonna go across the back to the one next door where we make a little, basically a loop around the back. You got it? Like that? Yeah. All right. And then we're gonna come back up and we're gonna do the, the same thing the whole way. So again, you go from top or bottom, you go, you're gonna go back behind and into its little little cut next door. You're gonna do that for the entire length of the weave. And I'm, so I'm gonna kind of just go through it and do it now. And again, it doesn't need to be especially taut, tight, but you do want a little bit of tautness there. And you can mm -hmm. pop it out and redo it. If you think something looks wrong, you skipped one. None of this is, you know, again, uh, 
super difficult, but it can get a little confusing because there's a, there is a system. How's it going over here? Heather? I don't know. How do you think that girl? looks great. These are what would be called um, probably in the family of like a table loom or a lap loom, um, but you can get full size floor looms and make rugs. So uh, this is probably one of the simplest versions of a loom that you can make. Um, I will say that there is uh, to make your own looms. There's the you can use an alternative. Uh, I've seen people make them out of like a, a picture frame or anything that you can put nails or cuts or anything like that along the edge that would hold the the warp here. It'll work. A tree branch. <laughs> uh, uh, I've made um, a loom out of PVC. Um, you can make it. Uh, there's also circular looms, which I really I really like circular looms. That's probably my favorite type of weaving. Okay, so when you get to the end, yeah, you kind of want to you can cut it off, maybe. Oh, I said scissors sharp enough to cut yarn, and I didn't bring any. Mm -hmm. Okay, do you want some seconds? <laughs> Thank you. All right. leave, how much did you leave? Like I just like maybe four or five inches. Okay. Basically, we're gonna try to tie a knot tightly at the end as well. So okay. right up here. Let's see if I can do it upright. Just a simple knot, nothing fancy. All right, so that is uh, laying the warp, and that is your loom, and we're ready to weave now. So. Um, so there's a couple, the other tools that we, I showed you earlier, there's going to be the spacer and the heddle. Now these aren't required and this is just how I prefer to, um, weave. Um, at this point there's not up or down, so you can just decide which, which okay. way is up for you. <laughs> um, uh, but we're making that decision right now. All right. Um, so I like to put a spacer bar in the bottom because that uh, we're gonna put fringe on at the end. And I like to do it at the end. Some people do it at the beginning, but I like to do it at the end because then I know kind of what's going on with the rest mm -hmm. of the weave. So we're gonna weave this. Uh, so lift up every other uh, warp. All right, and then you're just gonna squish it down to the bottom and it's gonna hold it in there. And we're, yeah, and we're just going to leave that guy in there for the remainder of the weaving. Okay. Um, so this is a heddle, and uh, there's lots of different versions of heddles. Obviously, this one's cardboard. Um, and so we're going to kind of do opposite of what we wove in here. So we're going to, if we went over here, we're going to go under. Okay. And we'll go over where we went, where we, we'll go over where we went under before. So okay. an opposite weave. You can do it anywhere up on, up higher on the loom. It doesn't need to be post down or tied or anything like that. So basically just like lifting every other around. So now, so we, now we have these two opposites and what the heddle does is when you put it up like this, it makes it really easy to weave through. Oh, okay. So, and then when you lay it down, it, they have, do make, like if you buy things, uh, for weaving, they do make heddles that have, you can, you weave it through and it, you lift it one way and it goes up and the other way it goes, lifts up the other. Mm -hmm. This is not that complicated. <laughs> this is cardboard. So <laughs> we're gonna, this is what we're gonna do. And um, so it'll help basically through half the, half the passes that we make, it's gonna help us go through quickly. Mm -hmm. And um, I think it's very useful. Um, if you find it to be cumbersome or not helpful to you, just take it out. It's not a big deal. All right, now it's time to start weaving. We For the kit, we have chosen a selection of chunky yarns and kind of a fall color scheme. Um, and so we, if you weren't able to get the kit, we are gonna have a list of those yarns. So you're welcome to get try to get those matching yarns. But basically, ch any chunky, we're kind of making a, we want it to be fill up pretty quickly. So a chunkier yarn is gonna, give you more bang for your buck as far as a quick weave. So the first yarn we're gonna start with is called, um, it's just like a, a cozy yarn. It's not a, a spun yarn, um, but it's uh, kind of velvety, I would mm, say. It's very soft. So I'm gonna use our little um, cardboard needle. And here's a trick to getting it in the thing. I twist it a little and double it over and then stick the twist through. And that goes through a little bit nicer than and then you can seat it in the yarn because there's a little cut down at the bottom of the hole and mm -hmm. you don't get in it. Oh, okay. It gets in there. Pretty. Our first pass through, we're going to use this spacer here and just okay. go over the first warp, okay. under, over, okay. under, over, under. And because the spacer, it's already kind of, it's pretty easy just to scoot it along. It's already kind of 
wide for you. All right, come on. Ooh, zip. There you go. <laughs> Here I say it's easy and then I mess it up. It's fine. All right, so you want to pull it through and leave a little bit of a tail, maybe just a couple mm -hmm. inches because we're going to weave it in at the end. Um, one thing a lot of uh, weaving instructions, they want you to create a mountain when you weave, so you kind of weave up and over and then you beat it down. We didn't supply a, a beater. There is okay. such a thing as a weaving beater in the thing, but you can just use a fork. <laughs> um, but because this is real chunky and the weave, the, the warp is pretty wide, your fingers will totally work. So you wanna push it down and kind of cozy it up against that, that spacer. So we're gonna pull the header, heddle down and lift the, that alternate row here. Okay. Are you able to see that? So this heddle, it's gonna stand up and open up a different, the, the warp a different way. So then you're able to just scoot it through. Maybe. And again, here I'm making like a little, uh, it's not, I'm not pulling it super tight. I'm not having it uh, right up against it when, I, when I'm pulling it initially. I'm gonna let down the heddle and it'll, okay. it'll fit in there. And that's when I'll, I'll beat it Push down. It down. Mm -hmm. And you, you don't want it to pull tight on this end um, because it will start to make your weave go whoop. <laughs> you'll, you'll get like a little waist on it. Like don't pull too tight. Yeah, yeah. don't pull yeah. tight. I, that'll pull that in. Yeah, I mean, that's a rule, but I break it all the time okay. because I, you know, the other thing about weaving is it's how you want it to look. So I like it to be a little bit tighter. So I might give it a little, you can finesse it a little how you want it mm -hmm. to lay. And that's that. That's, okay. we've now we weaved two rows. You've done it. All right, All right, so for the <laughs> so we're gonna continue until we run out of this length of yarn, and that's gonna uh, get us a, 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 a base row of this uh, white ivory yarn here, so. Okay, so we've now finished five rows of this plain weave with this, this first starting yarn, this ivory velvet yarn. So we're gonna start a new yarn, this green yarn. Um, we're gonna do two more yarns worth of plain weave. So we're gonna do a plain weave with the green and a plain weave with the white. So I'll show you again how we got started. I'm gonna again use my cardboard needle. I'm gonna, this one ha does have a twist to it. So I'm gonna twist with the twist, fold it over and put it in through the cardboard. Plain weave is the simplest weave and the majority of the weaving is going to be this plain weave and we're just gonna switch colors. So we're gonna again do a green, for the entirety of the length of the green and then the white in a plain weave. So let's get that started. And we're gonna start exactly the way we did. We'll look at the, our last weave. We went over on the last time. So we'll start under on this one. So again, oh, we can use our heddle again. <laughs> so we'll get our heddle and that makes that real easy to go straight through. And again, just pull it all the way to the end. Leave a little bit of length, maybe a couple inches. Lay your heddle down and then you're gonna set it down next to the white one. So yeah, yeah it's it's pretty obvious when yeah. one gets, uh, you do a, a, like a double row. Yeah. So we've gotten three, ro three different colors now, multiple rows, <laughs> um, <laughs> but of just this plain weave. So the ivory, the green and the white. So our next weave we're gonna do with this extra chunky uh, velvety yarn, and we're gonna do something called a salmic weave, salmac weave. <laughs> um, and it's basically, it's gonna look like a little braid. So we have four feet of this, this real chunky, extra chunky yarn, and then we'll show you how to braid it on here. It's gonna have a neat fishtail braid effect. So we're gonna take this four, length, four foot length and we're gonna double it over so it's two feet. We're gonna lay it here with a little bit of tail hanging off this double tail. So this is a bit of a cheat. Um, we'll call it a hack because it, it's, it's a hack. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna give it a little bit of a gap here between these two tails. We're gonna take the, the center on the other end. We're gonna bring it over, lift up this yarn, tuck it under and pull it through, pull it to the left. And that's the first one? Yep, the very first, the very first 
warp there. So it's gonna kind of look really silly because you're kind of just like laying it over. <laughs> but um, this is, we're starting a pattern here. So we'll have these little tails. It kind of makes a little. Just a couple inches. Yeah, I, yeah, maybe a couple inches. So that seems silly, I know, but. So we're gonna bring the end, the center over back to the, to right, the right. Um, and we're gonna choose, we're gonna skip one of the warps and we're gonna go to this, the next one. And we're gonna lift it up, we're gonna take two fingers, tuck it under, grab the center, pull it through. That makes sense? Um, <laughs> I think I need to see it one more time. All right, let me show you one more time. I'm gonna get this guy straightened out real fast. Some of this is gonna be like manipulating the yarn to do your will, basically. Mm -hmm. So it kind of looks like a jumbled mess right now, but I promise you it'll be a braid here in a second. So when I bring it back to the right, you can kind of see the braid starting there. So I'm gonna skip one of the warps, go to the second one. Okay, so and then so I need take your, your left hand okay. and stick it under that the, the second one out. Okay. And then take your right hand. Okay. And it's gonna go underneath. Underneath. Okay. And get it with your fingers and just pull it through and then lay it back to the right. And you see that? I did not do it. Right. Ah! <laughs> what did I do? What did I do? This is this is the hardest weave we're gonna do. So okay. I do this. I pick up the one where I want to go under, put my fingers through, grab that pinch there in the center. Just underneath. Yeah. Okay. And then pull it through until it's kind of taut. I know this looks silly on this one single but and then okay. lay it back that way. Lay and that, back that way. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. And then there you go in between these two guys. In between these two guys. And you're gonna skip one. Uh, okay. Skip and then that one. put your fingers in here. And it goes under. Mm-hmm. Pull them through. Okay. Kind right. of hold with the other hand. Okay. And then lay. And there you, you can see and you kind of squish them together. Okay. And you see the beginning okay. of your. I see the beginning of the braid. Okay. Again, there's a lot of like manipulating, especially with this big fluffy yarn. You kind of just like squash it and make it do your will <laughs> here. But yeah, it's going to start a little braid. You kind of want to make sure you're consistent. You don't want one one section tighter than the other. Mm -hmm. um, I'm going with mine. I'm being pretty loosey goosey on it. Mm -hmm. um, it's going to be really chunky, a real chunky right. guy. So. All right, so skip one and under. Now, traditionally a sumac, oh, I'm sorry, a sow mac is done one row at a time. So you go twist, 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 and then back twist, 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 twist. Mm -hmm. This is like saving you half your time. This is the hack. Yeah, this is mm -hmm. this is the life, the, the weaving hack. And it turns out exactly the same. And honestly, I find it to be a million times easier, but you know. If you, if you want to do your research and find that the traditional version is easier for me, for you, go for it. They, the results are going to be the same. So do I have way too much on this end? Um, I think you're going to be okay. Going to be okay. Yeah. All right. So we've just finished the Salmac weave. Um, and that is going to be the most complicated weaving weave we do on this weaving. The, the rest of the weaving is going to be all just that plain weave that we started out with. So we're going to start the order that you should do use the yarn in is indicated in the instructions. Um, basically, you're going to do that plain weave for every piece of yarn, uh, making a, a set of stripes. Um, and then you're going to um, continue all the way up until you're finished. Um, I will say, if you feel like comfortable in this weave and you want to stop it halfway through or you want to go backwards or make a triangle shape, you're welcome to do that. Once you get the hang of it, there's a lot of um, things you can do. You're not tied to doing our strict striped um, pattern that we were demonstrating here. But for the purposes of our instruction, we are, our intention is to do a stripe uh, with different colors and different levels and different textures. And that's what we're gonna continue on in a plain weave. Um, after we're gonna, so Heather and I are gonna weave through and then we'll have, um, we'll move on to doing the fringe the uh, weaving in the ends and how we're gonna tie it off on the, the dowel. So let us do a bit of weaving. It's not super exciting to watch. And then we will show you how to do that fringe.
right, before we continue any further, I did want to talk a little bit about this specific yarn that you're going to have in your kit. And this is called a roving. Um, it's a little bit different than other yard, yarns. It, um, all the other yarns in your kit are going to be twisted or somehow um, where they're tightly wound together. Um, this is one, if it was a natural fiber like wool, it would have come off the sheet, be cleaned, put into little bats like this, and, and that would be wool, but there's no twisting or spinning of the yarn. So the big deal about this <laughs> is that you do need to be able to handle it a little bit more delicately, and I'll show you why it can pull apart pretty easily if, you, if you're not careful. Um, but, I mean, you do have to put some force on it, and it's not something you need to be super worried about, just something that you should be aware of and cautious of. And if it does, that does happen, you can kind of like work it back together and still like force it into your, your um, weaving if you have to, but just, um, just don't tug on it real hard and you'll be fine. But I'll, I'm gonna show you a little bit on how I weave this section as well. All right, just like the other uh, plain weave section we've done, we're gonna do the same thing with the roving wool. Um, and again, we'll start opposite to the, the row we did before. So we're gonna go over this first one, under the next, and over and under, just like you did with the other ones. But again, you just need to be a little bit more delicate because it doesn't have quite the tensile strength of the rest of the, the fibers that we're gonna be using. So again, it's the same, but just a little extra special uh, gentleness that and you'll pull it through just like you did with the other ones. And then when you'll, this one we'll get two rows out of. So that's how that works. All right, so next we're gonna move on to the fringe or tassels on the bottom of the, the weaving. Um, you're gonna get a bunch of, probably not this much, I cut, cut a little extra um, of this white yarn, and we're gonna use that to create the tassels on the bottom of the um, weaving. So let me show you how to do that. All right, so first you're gonna, Remove this spacer that's in the bottom. Oop, don't remove the yarn with it. Keep that in there. So <laughs> remove that little spacing there. We're gonna take this eight, eight inch length of um, two pieces of yarn. We're gonna tuck it under the first warp thread there and pull it to the top. Not all the way, just a little bit. And then take the other end and tuck it under the second one. They're both going in towards that pair here. So if you look at it, it kind of goes in and out like that. So now you have your four ends here and you're gonna tuck it and you have a loop. You're gonna tuck it into the loop and pull it through. You don't wanna pull it super tight, it just needs to be there for now. So just, you can even it out if you'd like. But that's, that's for your first tassel right there. We're gonna continue on moving down the loom in the same way. So again, take one end of the two, tuck it under the next, this is gonna be the third, third thread there. The other end, underneath the fourth thread, again, forming this little pattern here. Take the four ends together and pull it through to make a little, this is called a Raya knot, R-Y-A, Raya knot. And so you're making a little knot that leads to a little tassel there. So again, just continue in the same manner across. Uh, I'm gonna stop here in the middle so I can show you the second row here, but you would continue all the way across with those Raya knots. Um, and I like to do a second layer just to make the fringe a little bit more plush. You're absolutely welcome. Just to, if you like the way this looks, definitely leave it like that. It's not a huge deal. Like I said, I'm gonna start here on this second thread just to start this second row of Raya knots. And again, not required or necessary, um, but if it's, I, I like just like a slightly plusher look with the Raya knots, so. And I also satisfies my balance. So I kind of pull it down and almost settles in between the two that are already there, but it's just a little bit off center. And again, just continue on this way until you fill um, the entire loom. Or again, not if that's not what you want. <laughs> so again, I started with the second and third here and so I'll go on to the fourth and the fifth. All 
All right, once you've completed the two rows, if that's what you want to do, uh, it's going to look something like this. So there's going to be alternate rows of Raya knots. And there's going to be a little bit of space before your starting um, weave and between those knots. So now we're going to move on how to get this off the loom. You have a couple options. One thing you're going to want to do eventually is trim uh, this fringe. Oh, you, of course, can leave it how it, like it is, but um, I really like a nice even uh, uh, length on all my fringe. I wait until I get it off the loom just so I know it's kind of like settled in where it's going to be and I'm not working with different le levels if things move. So that's how I'm going to do it. You're welcome to do that at any point, but um, once it's finished, it may have shifted a little bit. So um, it's really up to you, but let me show you how I get this off the loom. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to move your knots. I know you just got them all snug down there, but one reason to leave, not do them super tight when you put them on is that we're gonna, we need to move them up. So we want to just kind of fill this, scoot them up to be snug up against this bottom part of the weaving. And so you can just push them. They move, should move pretty easily. And if you've done them a little tight, you can just pull on this section here, this, uh, the top of the Raya knot, and it should loosen them up. So I'm just pushing from underneath and pushing them up to snug, cozy right up to the, the bottom of the, the thing, and uh, the weaving thing, <laughs> the weaving. Um, and you, again, don't, you don't need to be over tight with it. You don't need to squish them so they're super, super dense. Um, uh, everything should be still nice and pretty loose and kind of movable on the, the loom. And so that's gonna give, just give you a little space to play with if you, wanna make, if you do wanna make it tighter in the end. So that's scooting up the knots. And we're done, when you get those all scooched up, you're gonna flip the fringe up onto it, up onto the weaving, and you're gonna have, you're gonna see the bottom of your weaving. I'm just gonna scooch it so it's like nice and even, and it's easy to see there. So we have um, the the actual warp of the of the weaving visible here, and this is the part that gets a little scary. So brace yourself. You're gonna need a pair of scissors for this and we're gonna cut this, so be prepared. First, we're gonna pop it off the bottom of the loom, and then you're gonna cut it right there. So now this is a little scary part because it will come loose if you're not careful. So don't move anything, but then you're gonna tie this one and then a, just a double knot and again, you don't need to pull it super tight, it'll hold. And that double knot will hold it nice and secure there at the bottom of the weaving. I'm also gonna snip these a little short because these were the same thread, they might match, or th same yarn, but they don't really match, so I'm gonna cut these a little short so they're not poking out where they don't need to be. All right, and that's it. That's the whole thing that holds in that little knot. <laughs> Hold your whole weaving together. So we're gonna do this along the entire length of the and just go slowly and don't move anything real fast and it should be fine. I know it is a little nerve wracking, but you can do it. So when we get to the last three here, this last one's gonna be not have a partner. So we're gonna have to incorporate it into this knot as well. Um, so I just wanted to make sure and point that out to you so you don't get to that point and think that you're, you've been left out to sea there with us. So basically, I'll just tie it along with the one that's next to it, so it kind of makes it make it ha make it have a partner. So, so again, not a big deal, but we just incorporate that last that last thread in with the other. The, it's it's buddy next to it. Oh, come around there. These can be a little finicky, but again, just go slow. It'll it'll work. All right, and that's that, and then again, trim them off, and that's. All right, so we have the bottom released from the loom, and now it's onto the top. The top is gonna be a little bit easier. We're not gonna be cutting anything. We're gonna leave the loops intact, but we do wanna tie them down um, in a knot so we are securing this top row so it's not just loose. Um, you can also, there's a hem stitch that you can do along this top that's not something we're going to include in this tutorial, um, which would mean that you wouldn't have to tie these in knots, but um, 
there are lots of different ways to finishing off a loom, uh, finishing off a weave, but I find this one, is the one I'm gonna show you to be the easiest. I'm gonna start by compressing it just a little bit. I know I just went on and on about not making it super tight, <laughs> but I wanna give us a lot of play in, in for this up here. So I'm just gonna kinda, and this is also somewhere where you can make some adjustments on how you want your loom to look. Like if you want this to be pulled out a little bit more, you can pull it out, you can fluff up you know, these parts here. Um, but the thing we need to do before we take it off the top is just compress it a little bit so we give us a little bit of length between here and the top of the loom. All right, so I'm gonna take off this first one. And again, this guy doesn't have a partner like the end one over here. So I'm gonna basically incorporate it into its neighbor just like we did down below. So, all right, I'm gonna lay him down. So again, I'm gonna partner this, the single thread, keep calling it thread, yarn, the single yarn with these, uh, with the one next to it. And I, instead of tying it uh, in a knot, I'm gonna tie the loop in a knot and then have it snug up against the base. Be careful with this one string that's at the end. It may decide to wiggle around on you, but you can always pull it tighter when you're done. So in your kit, you're also gonna have a crochet hook. It's probably gonna look a little bit different than this, um, but, this, can, this is nice to pull yarn through if it's, a, like I said, a little bit tight or a little bit finicky. We'll also use it while we're weaving in the, the ends of uh, the yarns over here. All right, there we go. <laughs> Perseverance, we got it through. <laughs> Looks a little bit mangled, but it's fine. It is genuinely fine. So again, if things get a little warped or strange or you're always can like move, shift things around. So in this process, you might get, get this top row a little bit wiggly looking, but you can always move that around afterwards. So we've got that first one through and that one was a toughie. All right, again, you're just kind of pinch the base together of the loop and tie it in a knot like you would. Um, you're tying a string in a knot basically. And what you want is to get this loop, you need it to come out the top and you're gonna, that's what you're gonna use for hanging your actual weaving through. So get a nice little loop there and also secures this top row of weaving as well. All right, there it goes. And we're officially off the loom. So you can toss that. Almost ready for hanging. Um, but we have to do something about these ends. <laughs> um, now I have definitely seen people weave and then leave these loose, maybe trim them even. Um, that's absolutely something you can do, but um, we're gonna do, I'll show you how to weave in your loose ends, um, and that's gonna give you a real nice finished edge. I will say it is gonna be, um, the, challenges, the challenges of this is gonna be that, these big chunky yarns. And basically we're just wanna hide these bits on the back. That's the back that's gonna be facing the wall, so we don't need to make it look very pretty or anything like that, and so, we just need to hide them more than anything else. So when you look on the back, you'll see these pieces of the warp there. Real easy. Bloop. Tuck that guy in. Tuck this other guy in. And you kind of want to you can look, check back on the back to see how it looks. Looks good. You can tie it off if you wanted to. You could trim these short. I'm going to leave them as they are. This already has such depth. It's depth. It, it's not going to sit super flush against the wall in this section. You could tuck it over under a couple more, another one if you wanted to, to keep it like, make sure it stayed real nice and tucked. Again, this isn't a rug on your floor, it's gonna hang on your wall, so it doesn't have to be super duper secure. Just that alone will be enough to hold it and hang on your wall nicely. Now on the other end, we have a loop. So we're gonna cut that loop in half. Well, you don't have to, I do. You can cut the loop in half. Boop, 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 boop. And we're gonna just do the same thing. Same exact thing. And we're kind of gonna do, I'm gonna cut these a little bit shorter because they're kind of really long. Those look like little woolly worms. Just tuck them in a couple of these warp threads that you see in the back. We don't need to twist them. We don't need to tie them necessarily. Feel free if that makes you a little more comfortable with it being secure. But I'm just gonna cut off the extra that's hanging out here. that and then I kind of like to mush it <laughs> I don't know if it actually does anything but I feel like it kind of makes it feel like it's a little more secure 
And then, so those ends are woven in there. So let's go on to some of the simpler weaves. I'm gonna do this one right by the, right by the fringe here. So it's basically the exact same concept. And you're gonna flip them over. And this is where I like to use the crochet hook because then you can pull it through some of, the, some of these in the back. So you just hook underneath and then hook this thread and pull it. I, I keep saying yarn and thread interchangeably. Mm -hmm. um, and then I'm gonna, yeah, mm -hmm. lay it over here and get another one and just hook it through a couple of these. Just weave it in basically. You're just weaving it into the back. And again, it doesn't have to be perfect or pretty because it's on the back. So this type of yarn, this plush yarn is nice because it doesn't split. So when you grab it with a crochet hook, it won't like go into pieces. I'm gonna trim that off that little extra bit. And that's, that's nice and secure in there. It's not gonna go anywhere. So these, the ones that are, have a little bit more fiber, you can hook it halfway through. That really shouldn't matter again on the back, but just something to be aware of if, if you do only hook part of it. Again, don't stress out about this. You basically just want it to look good on the front. So if it looks like a hot mess on the back, it's no big deal. Um, basically just get it under a few other threads, uh, yarn underneath here, and uh, try not to pull it super tight. You don't wanna um, make it pull in the side of your yarn, uh, your weaving, but just enough to secure it so it won't like immediately fall out. So I usually just do two, honestly, and then cut off the excess. And that, that is it. And you just move all the way up until all your tails are tucked in. And you're gonna, for this one, this, <laughs> let's move on to this roving. I'm gonna skip ahead a little bit. Again, this guy can be pretty, uh, uh, kind of a little weird little piece of, I'm gonna trim off the extra bits so they just don't get in my way. But not too much, you want enough tail to work with. Um, this guy, a little tip, if you want to weave it in, which you, you, you know, it's totally doable. I twist it a little bit. And I'm gonna have to puff up this little fella here and just pull it, tuck him underneath this warp thread as best you can. Just, you just need to get the tail on this guy. He's not gonna go anywhere once he's underneath there. Because this one isn't gonna be super long tail or anything and because it's so fluffy, just shove and squish it in until it look, in, until it, so, and I just wove that underneath a piece of the warp there. So, but I'll move up and tuck in all the tails all over, and then we'll get to hanging it on the dowel. After you've finished up weaving in all the ends, let's pretend that's been done. If you want to, again, you don't have to, you can trim up the bottom of your, um, your weaving. Now, trimming it straight across, totally doable, and that is it. And you can definitely do this and work on it for hours <laughs> and make it absolute perfection. I've even done ones made out of roving where I used hairspray so that it would not move. Oh, wow. <laughs> yeah. Nice you can also, in this one, um, I cut the different layers in different. Uh, so I had a t upper layer and a lower layer, and I cut the upper layer at one angle and the lower layer at another. So you can definitely have fun with that. I like them when they have a nice steep angle on them. Those are fun. Um, so that's, that's somewhere where you can just kind of do whatever you think looks cool or, but also just straight across or leave it all natural. All right, so our final step is gonna be hanging it on the dowel provided. Um, so this dowel, you can cut it shorter if you want, or paint it would be fun, leave it as is. So all you're gonna do, pretty straightforward, is just put it through the loops on your top here. Oop, this one needs one thread snipped. All right, even them up, but just scoot them towards the center. And then you can put a string around here and a string around here and that's your hanging or just put it on a tack or whatever you wanna do. And that's what you hang it from. Well, thank you so much, Whitney, for doing that for of us. Of course, I and, hope everyone enjoyed it. Uh, um, we will have a list of the uh, supplies mm -hmm. in the description box for those who aren't able to get a kit in time while we still have them. 
So check that out. Thanks so much for watching. And thank you again, Whitney, for, for doing this for us. Thank you. You're awesome.